So how do you know when God has planned for you to be with someone? How do you know if the person coming around you or the person you are going around is the perfect choice for you? This is not just about the romantic side of life and existence. It applies to almost every general aspect of our lives. We are social beings, and this means that we all get to relate, associate, and coexist in the same society and within the same geographical locations. As time goes on, being a socially enabled species, there is always the longing for companionship, whether for support, love, fun, or to fulfill the great mandate of marriage. Now the question many people are faced with is, how do you know that the person in your life now is the correct person for you? In this video, I will show you the signs and things to look for in order to know that God wants you to be with the people or person in your life through the eyes of Scripture. Life and existence do not require that everyone become your friend or have access to your life. The Bible commissions us to be at peace with all men, but that does not translate to having relationships with all of them. Some people have been strategically placed throughout your life since the day you were born to help mold and shape your destiny into that which God had planned from your creation and birth. God goes so far as to prune, trim, and constantly remove people from your life while constantly bringing others your way. Your associations in life will make or break you. So many lives have been turned upside down, inside out, or on the premises of bad relationships of any kind, whether friendship or romance, as the case may be. Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with the fools and get in trouble. You will need to choose your friends and acquaintances carefully to follow the trajectory of your life. A student of medicine will never become a doctor if he keeps attending classes with engineering students. As important and closely related as the two fields of study might be, they will never produce the same doctor. So too is your life. The number of people you let into your life determines the quality of information they bring with them. And the quality of your existence is determined by the amount of information you receive per time. So how do you know that God wants someone in your life? You feel safe and comfortable whenever you're around that person. Have you ever just come into a place and immediately met a particular person there and lost your peace? Yes, I have been in that situation before. Anytime this lady came around me, I began to feel very uneasy. I would literally lose my peace and become very uncomfortable in her presence. And before long, I knew why. In the book of Proverbs, Paul was writing to the Corinthians about relationships amongst the brethren. And in 1 Corinthians 7.15, he said to them, But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. Look at what he says to them in the latter part of that verse. God has called us into peace. We are not called into uncomfortable situations and relationships. If you lose your peace around a person, it is a sign that God does not want you to be close to that person. God will bring you in contact with someone who has his word in him and the character of God. This particular point is only possible when you know what the characteristics of God are. You cannot recognize what you do not know. When God wants you to be with someone, he will bring into your life a person who possesses his traits, a person who has learned the ways of God and the way of love. A hostile person prone to rage and outbursts cannot be God's will because he would have expelled the spirit of rage from him. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 8, that whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Very concise and straight to the point. A person who God brings into your life would have to be one who has been thoroughly bred by God. And one who has passed through the training of God will have his attributes. 
Having the wrong partner in your relationship is not something to be taken lightly. It can break your heart, or worse, it can ruin your life, your future, and even the people who rely on you. Listen to me, child of God. You do not want to get yourself into a situation where you are in any form of relationship with someone who has not encountered God. The only love they know and can offer is that which the world has taught them. The most serious error made by some of the most powerful people in history was associating with ungodly men. Do not be deceived. Evil communication will corrupt good morals. If the ungodly man does not treat you badly, he will ruin your life and your chances with God. The person speaks God's word into your life with the intention of seeing you grow. Love is a journey. And just like any other journey, you have to choose the right path to achieve happiness and success, not only for yourself and the one you love, but also for the relationship you and your partner have. The person who comes from God must have the word of God. Listen to me, child of God, a partner from God is meant to grow you. God does not do anything just because he feels like it. He is an intentional God and he does not do anything until there is a need for it. The need for communion with other beings aside from the angels necessitated the creation of Adam, the first man. The need for companionship for Adam brought about the creation of Eve. Hear me again, God does not bring people into your life except to intentionally build you. And anyone who is coming into your precious life must have the words from God to help in that building process. Look out for God's words through theirs. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 34 says, For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. God's messenger delivers the message from God. One of the things you will notice is the quality of the message they carry when they speak. The person God wants you to be with will be compassionate, practical, and generous in love. Listen, one of the signs that you are with the right person is the way they treat you. Jesus made us understand that love is practical. He came from heaven, took the form of a man, and died to save the man just to put into practice the extent to which love should go. The people God brings into your life will determine the type of life you have and lead. If you make the mistake of letting people into your life who have not been through the Holy Spirit, your life will be a testing ground for the practices of the world. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, nor in tongue, but in deed and in truth. There's no greater love than one that is felt physically. The Bible makes us understand that God loved the whole world so much that he gave his only son in atonement for the sins of the world. There is no such thing as unconditional love. The kind of people God will bring into your life will be people who understand the act of loving and the covenant of sacrifices made in love. Any deviation from this is a warning sign for your fate. When God wants you to be with someone, when that person appears, they will be eager to immerse themselves in your life. They will be willing to put themselves on the line just to show you that they love you. Like I said earlier, you must also be knowledgeable about the love of God to recognize it when you see it in the actions of another toward you. You cannot recognize what you have not known before. Giving is a strong sign of love. Anyone God brings your way must be a giver. Tight-fisted people are not proper lovers because God is generous in love. The person will respect you. Anybody whom God approves to enter your life must be someone who has respect for your life. Your choices are not subject to his anger. Instead, where he feels his opinions are needed, he offers them. Listen to me, avoid people who always want to make you feel like all your decisions are useless, except when they come from them. There's a word for them. 
sociopaths. God in his majesty and superiority still respects our choices when we make them. Whatever we bind on earth here will also be bound in heaven where he resides. He said in his word, that is respect for whatever choices we decide to make as humans. Any person who does not respect you does not deserve to be with you. Relationships are one of the greatest gifts of life. Family, friends, loved ones, parents, children, colleagues. Our relationships with people form the beauty of society and community. Through relationships, we are able to find companionship and build togetherness. Through our association with people, we are able to connect with one another, regardless of background, history, race, or social status. Even the Bible, in expressing the power of having someone or people in your life, said in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12, Two people are better than one, because they can reap more benefit from their labor. For if they fall, one will help his companion up. But pity the person who falls down and has no one to help him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they can keep each other warm. But how can one person keep warm by himself? Although an assailant may overpower one person, two can withstand him. Moreover, a three-stranded cord is not quickly broken. Furthermore, when God created man in Eden and blessed humanity to multiply all over the earth, he was establishing the essence of community. Man was built to be a social being, to live in community, to communicate, this is why we have eyes to see, ears to hear, feet to move, hands to touch, skin to feel that touch, and so on. You can love yourself, but being surrounded by loving people makes a big difference. You may be able to help yourself many times, but there will be times when you will require the assistance of others, and knowing that they are there to assist you is a great blessing. This was something Jesus realized. That is why he promised his disciples and everyone who believes in him, his ever-present company through the Spirit. John chapter 14, verses 17 through 19. The Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see any more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. This is such a beautiful thing, knowing that as you journey through life, facing the turmoil, the heartaches and the storms, the highs and the lows, you will always have someone close to you when no one else can. There are different kinds and levels of relationships we develop along life's journey. The value of each relationship is determined by either the kind of connections we share or by the kind of benefit they bring into our lives. For instance, with or without benefit, because we are connected to family by blood, we share a special connection with our parents and our siblings. No matter how much differences you may have with your family, they are still your family. Nothing can change that fact that the same blood flows through your veins. Though family may abandon you and hurt you, they are still what they are, family. The same goes for your spouse. You see, your spouse shares a bond with you that is both physical, legal, and spiritual. In fact, the Bible says that when a man and a woman are properly and legally joined together in marriage, it is God who has joined them together, and nobody is permitted to separate that union. It is a union that is binding on earth and in heaven. Mark chapter 10 verses 7 through 9 says, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. 
Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. God is glorified in any relationship that makes us stronger, better, and helps us fulfill His purpose for our lives. Our friends, spouses, acquaintances, and family are amazing additions to our lives. However, dear friend, take note of this very important message today. You must never elevate anyone in your life to that point where you have to beg him or her to stay in your life before they do. A relationship is no longer one when it now feels like a favor done for one party by the other. In the world today, there is a massive desire in the hearts of many people to feel loved, accepted, and wanted. This desire has driven some people to give themselves away, slowly losing sight of their own self-worth until they are reduced to nothing but a tool in the hand of someone who is just there for the fun ride and will toss them off any time they want. Beloved, you are much more than you think you are. You are not just anybody seeking validation from the world. You are not just one man or one woman seeking to be liked by people. You are more than that. You are the king's kid. Do you not know this? I mean, the monarch of the universe calls you his most prized possession. No one sees in you what he sees, not even you yourself. David, the sweet psalmist once asked in Psalms 8 verses 3 through 6, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. You might as well put your name right there, dear saint. You are so special to him. He calls you a chosen generation. He calls you royalty, a royal priesthood. He calls you a holy nation. The Lord God Almighty looks on you and calls you a very peculiar, special, unique, and amazing soul. This is who you are. Do you now see that reducing yourself to seeking validation from one person who is here today and gone tomorrow does a great injustice to who God says you are? Now, I do not deny that you will not always be right in your relationship choices or in your dealings with people that God will bring into your life. Some people come into your life to fulfill God's purpose in you and for you. They may end up leaving because you fail to see that purpose or even appreciate it at the time. Maybe because you don't know so much or you are still unwise and not mature at the time. As you grow, you can learn to appreciate people in life much more. As you grow, you can learn to love people rightly. As you mature, you will learn to bring peace and healing to people that God has brought into your life. Placing value and appreciating people that God brings into your life. Acknowledging your limitations and weaknesses. Acknowledging when you are wrong and have messed up. Humbling yourself to learn and grow from them is a great way to sustain good relationships and become great yourself. However, Every person that comes into your life has a time, a season, and a purpose. One of the greatest disasters you can bring into your life as an individual is to keep a relationship for long with someone meant to be in your life only for a short while. Over time, such a relationship will become a burden, a ticking time bomb waiting to explode and destroy stuff in your life. The same thing happens with a relationship meant to be for a long term being cut short because it doesn't meet your desired speculations. Dear friend, sometimes God's best does not always come in the most beautiful packages. Not knowing the difference between the kinds of relationships that are in your life or how to manage them will bring more loss to your life than gain. Therefore, my friend, if or when people choose to leave your life at any time in your life, especially when you know you didn't do anything that displeases God, please let them go. There is only one relationship in your life that you cannot do without, your relationship with God. 
if and when any other relationship ends. As long as you can confirm that it is not the result of your bad attitude hurting a good soul in your life, but rather a threat, a desire to replace God in your life, to diminish your value and worth, to make you chase after them as if your life depended on it, let them go. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. People can choose to leave your life for different reasons. You need to understand this, my friend. Some people will leave because they can no longer manipulate you like they used to. Some people will leave when you start standing up for yourself speaking up against their behavior and demands of you that has been wronged. Some people will walk away when they can no longer mess around with your life. Some will leave when they find new prey. Some might leave because they find someone they believe is better than you. Like I said, you are not perfect. God doesn't even say you are. However, you are not going to remain the way you are as long as you walk in the light of what God has said concerning you, growing in His grace and mercy. What you need in your life right now is not someone who sees you for who you've been all along, but who will dare to see you for who you can be. That's what you need in your life, my friend. You don't need another friend who wants to hang out and waste your time and destiny on trivial things. You don't need another friend who just wants to blend in with the world and who gets offended when there is even the slightest mention of standing out. You need the right people in your life. I will say that again. You need the right people in your life. You need people who push you closer to God, closer to destiny, closer to righteousness and holiness. You need people who will love you for who you are and invite you patiently to become who you are meant to be. Therefore, when one who cannot do this, who doesn't see this, decides to leave, let them go. God will remove some people from your life in order to plant the right ones. Sometimes he will remove them in order to create room. Therefore, instead of crying because someone left you or because someone disappointed you, rejoice, my friend. Celebrate and consider their departure a deliverance from whatever might have happened if they weren't removed from your life. I encourage you to grow in your spiritual life through prayer, studying the Bible and fellowshipping with other God-fearing Christians. This has a way of empowering and growing your spiritual senses. It is called discernment. Through discernment, you will know who should be in your life and who shouldn't. Through discernment, you will understand what God would want you to handle a relationship that is showing up in your life. Through discernment, you will be able to read the signs that some is meant to stay and others are meant to leave. And you can have this discernment by the help of the Holy Spirit in you. That, however, will be the outcome of a very sensitive and developed spirit inside of you. Draw closer to God today, my friend. Your heavenly Father wants to guide you and protect you from the troubles of this life. It is time to start listening to Him and knowing Him, understanding when He speaks or acts, and following Him accordingly. Relationships are gifts from God. Or let me rephrase that better. Good relationships are gifts from God. God made us social beings, meant to interact with each other and living to our fullest potentials on earth until our time is up. The Bible says that two are better than one. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. This scripture right here carefully details fundamental elements that make relationships such a beautiful thing. 
And in this video, I intend to fixate a little bit more on intimate relationships. One with marital and lifetime plans in view. Dear child of God, the Lord Jesus himself told us of one of the most beautiful attributes of God, which is to give good gifts to his children. Matthew 7, 9 to 11. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And one of the greatest gifts of a lifetime is the gift of the right partner. The preacher in Ecclesiastes pointed out that anyone who has no one should be pitied because when they fall, they have no one to help them up. Listen, yes, you may not need to get married to have people who will lift you up when you're down. However, if we're gonna be honest, then there are situations when the only person you need at that time is someone you're intimate with. There are situations I may not be okay to make available to you, but with my partner, I can lay it all bare. There are situations where no one can reach you but the one you are intimate with. The Bible says in Genesis 2, 18, 22, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. After the creation of man, God saw there was still a need in him. He was one of a kind, and although God made him to interact with him, he knew that they would not be on equal plane, and the man would feel the need sooner or later to interact with someone who is exactly like himself. We all feel that at one point or the other in our lives. Children seem to connect more with friends and peer groups than with older folks. Youth leaders will confirm that young people would rather confide in a leader who can relate with their feelings and experiences. And who better to do this than someone who's in close proximity to them in age, another young person? God knew that Adam would feel that, and he felt Adam's need even before Adam did himself. This right here is another display of the nature of God. He loves and cares deeply about you so much that even before you consider something as an issue to bring up before him, he puts it up himself to worry about fixing it. I had the opportunity to talk with a friend some years ago, and while we talked, she lamented about how thieves were doing damage to a particular venture of hers, and she didn't know what to do, so she'd resorted to using some desperate means to curb the issue. Then I asked if she'd talked to God about it already, and she said she hadn't because she didn't think God involved himself in this sort of thing. I was quite surprised, but when I asked again if the issue meant something to her, and she said yes, then I said it meant something to God too. Whatever bothers you bothers him. Why? Because you're his child and he loves you. Luke 12, 6 to 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. If you're worth this much to God, then your relationship with the right partner means something to him. And this is not only because he loves you, but because the wrong partner in your life has the power to mess up and destroy many things in your life. That's what God protects you from sometimes when it seems your relationship with them doesn't work. You try all you can, pray as much as you can, read as many books as possible, but somehow it seems God himself is stopping the relationship from succeeding. Don't you think there must be something he's trying to save you from that you might not even be aware of? Surely there must be, for there is no limit to the knowledge, wisdom, and intelligence of the Lord God. 
He's seen certain things up ahead. And because you loved him and committed the relationship to him, he's fighting for you. Many young believers have locked themselves in situations God didn't prepare for them because they shut God out, closed their eyes and ears to the warning signs, and went all in. Today they may act as if all is well, but they themselves are aware that they're stuck and need rescuing. It's very important, dear believer, to grow in your relationship with God. This relationship builds up your spirit and mind to sense things in the spirit realm and long before their time. It also gives you the ability to see things that are concealed from the physical eyes by deception. This ability is called discernment. I know that many people are given the gift of discernment. Still, every child of God who has the Spirit of God in them has usable measures of this ability as well. You can call it the development of spiritual sense organs, similar to the eyes, ears, nose, and skin, which are spiritual. 1 Corinthians 2, 14-15 The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness, and cannot understand them because they're discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. Hence, when a man or a woman comes into your life, you're able to sense the kind of spirits they operate with and their true motives. And you're also able to read the signs and understand their implications in real life and in time. This way, you're able to gain the wisdom needed to leave while you still can, before damage can be done. You see, most people think, well, I'll give it a chance. If it doesn't work, there's always the option of divorce. They fail to understand that there's a good reason God said he hated divorce. One of those reasons why is what divorce did to you. Sure, you can always walk away if you like, but you can't walk away from all the damage that's done to you. And if you've had children already, to them too. But with God's help, you can salvage these experiences before they take place in your life. How? When you let him lead you and direct the course of your relationships with others. So how do you know if God wants you with someone? What will happen if he wants you with that person? First, please understand that many things can happen, some reliable and others not so much. So it's important you know the difference. Here's what will happen if God wants you with someone. He will bind you two together. This may work with feelings, but feelings will not be the foundation. You may probably not even really like this person in that manner. Yet somehow you discover that they're usually on your mind. You may even find yourself bumping into each other in unplanned situations and places. You may even try as hard as you like and even pray about it, but it will only happen more and more. Sometimes some people may even relocate from a city because of this. However, after some time, something always happens. Either they return or the person they're running from moves to the same environment too and so on. Remember that I said this is not about obsessive or infatuating feelings towards him or her, but a connection orchestrated by God, which, when accepted, can develop into a feeling more intimate. And then one very important, probably the most important on this list, is that God will give you peace with them. One of the signs that you should steer clear off that person is pressure. Pressure to sin, to become something or someone God didn't make you to please them, then God, pressure from the fear that you might be doing something wrong, and so on. You see, whomever God wants you to be with will keep your mind at peace. They will help you get closer to God. They'll be interested in your potentials and help you develop it. They'll look for means to help you feel loved, safe, and secure. Somehow, you'll feel peace committing yourself to them and their own visions without feeling intrusive or misguided you'll feel like their mission complements your life's pursuit as well, and you will find fulfillment helping them reach it. It is a beautiful journey to find and be in a God-ordained relationship, my friend. Do not settle for anything less. Do not shut God out of this vital area of your life. He wants to be involved in this area so that in a world filled with darkness, you and the family that will come out of both of you will be the light to shut down the darkness.
I pray that you'll get it right in this area when the time comes to be with someone. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you find yourself at that juncture where you don't know what or who exactly God wants in your life? One of the most difficult decisions that we all might have to face one day as human beings, and more so as Christians, is the decision on who to spend the rest of our lives within marriage. One of the greatest problems in the world right now is the huge, steady increase in divorce and separation cases. In a world where divorce and the institution of marriage are no longer considered sacred or everlasting, it becomes more important and pertinent that you make the right choices and marry correctly. Your life and destiny will literally be determined by the kind of partner you decide to live your life with. I have seen great prospects, smart minds, and awesome geniuses whose lives were brought to an underrated end because they made the decision to settle with the wrong person. The same way I have seen seemingly ordinary people who didn't seem to hold many prospects become huge successes and reference points for others on the premises of who they decided to settle with. Do not let anyone trivialize the issues of marriage and unions for you, child of God, because the success of your life will require that the partner you bring into it is in tune with and supportive of that life and destiny. Many of the lives and destinies that were cut short or damaged by their spouses showed signs. There were signs that showed that these people were not the ones for them. God and even the person must have shown signs that they ignored, either because of emotions or just because they felt confident marriage would correct that behavior in that person. But they found out too late that it couldn't be fixed. Many didn't have the opportunity to walk away because that marriage consumed them. There are signs to look out for that show that a person is not the right one for you. Their relationship with God is not their top priority. A person who does not love God cannot translate the love. As a child of God, the Bible clearly puts it to us in the book of Proverbs 27 verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The love and fire of God that is burning in your heart will be sniffed out cold if you make the mistake of admitting a person into your life who does not push for the same love and fire of God as you. You cannot be an iron and your partner a wood. There will be no sharpening. Your life and destiny with God require a partner who knows how much your heart beats for God. Your partner cannot appreciate or know how much your heart beats for God until their heart beats in the same rhythm for Him. A heart that does not beat for God cannot love you correctly in the way of God. I heard a story of a lady who was in the choir at a branch of our church in another state, who from all reports had a very good record, sings with the voice of angels and on fire for God, doing exploits in the music ministry. The day she got married, we all heard about it and were so happy for her because she was not a very young lady. Fast forward a year after her marriage and we were not hearing about her any longer. We barely saw her on program flyers and recently we realized the man had a long history of domestic violence and has been maltreating this lady. Her ministry, her love for God, her life, her passion, all came to a halt because she allowed a con man into her life as a partner. Watch out, child of God. Their company of friends does not reflect who they portray to be. Listen to me, child of God. The quality of people you allow into your life determines the quality of information that flows into your life. The quality of information that goes into your life determines the quality of life you will lead. The quality of life you lead will determine the quality of your future and your destiny. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. 
If you realize that the quality of people around them does not match the personality they portray, or does not match what the Bible demands of wholesome relationships, that is a sign that he or she is not the right one for you. The level of information they will bring into your life will be a reflection of what they have been hearing from people around them. Show me your friends and I can literally guess your type just by observing them. You find most of these people will have wandering eyes, substance abuse, lying tongues, and very mysterious ways about them. You cannot really put your finger on their movements and their operations. Everything about them seems to be shrouded in kind of mystery and you lose your peace each time you think about them instead of calm and reassurance. Do not ignore those signs. That is a red flag to quit now before they corrupt your heart and your life. They do not value your opinion or choices or are concerned about your growth, physically or spiritually. Anybody who downplays your choices, your actions, and your plans in life does not support your growth. There is a difference between when someone makes inputs to improve the chances of your choice and when someone criticizes your choices and actions to bring out the failures in them without proferring solutions. You are going to spend the rest of your life with that person and you cannot go through life every day being put down by the first person who should hold you up. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8 gives us a perfect example of what love from a partner is supposed to do. It says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. A person who loves you does not put you down to reveal your flaws and sins. Their love covers it. When you find yourself in a relationship with people who want to point out your indiscretions and your failures, rather than cover you up and help you, that is a red flag to quit and you should not ignore it. The person who you must let into your life must possess the ability to hold your hands through your decision-making times in life. Make inputs where it is necessary to take on the challenges with you when the time comes. When your strength fails like Job's in the Bible, you will need a partner who will stand by you, not the kind of woman Job married who joined his friends to tell him to curse your God and die. Child of God, you need to move on from your past. Leave these people in your past. Forget them there. No man walks into the future looking backwards. The only things in the past that can help you are lessons and people mistake these lessons for the burdens they carry around as the past. God has a better purpose for your life and that purpose is set for the future with Him. God made a promise to us in the Bible. In Joel chapter 2, verse 25, He says, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. The plans of God capture your past. You are only missing out on the future by focusing on the past. There's nothing in your past that you lost that God does not have plans to restore to you in the future. The purpose of God for you cannot come to fruition until you accept to put the past behind you and surrender to Him as He brings you into a future in which you will conquer and regain all. The purpose of God for your destiny is clearly stated in His words. You cannot attain destiny until you move away from the past. You cannot walk forward fast enough while dragging baggage. Remember how clumsy you always get at the airport when you carry too much luggage? You are slower than other passengers and you are more stressed because you have to monitor and take care of so many of your luggage at once. Then you also remember how relieved and the joy you felt when you finally got to your destination and the bags no longer were your concerns because someone took charge of them. That is how relieved you will feel when you lay all these baggages at the foot of Jesus and take up His grace to exist in His purpose. Before we end this episode, I want to bring you some news that will gladden your heart. It does not matter what or who you left in your past. 
One of the hallmarks of moving on is that we leave people and things behind that will hinder us. Some of them are habits, characters, personal belongings, family, and friends that people have used over the years to define us. Moving ahead means you have to leave most of them in the past. But I come bearing good news. What God has for you is way better. He tells us to cast all our cares upon Him because He loves and cares for us. Your imagination might run wild, your dreams might go deep, and your visions about your future in God might seem very clear. But I want to assure you that they are nothing compared to the plans and purposes of God for your life. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, However as it is written, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, these things God has prepared for those who love Him. These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. This is the confidence that we have in God, that His plans for us are beyond our imaginations. All we need to do is believe and surrender our wheels. No two captains can successfully manage one boat unless one agrees to take instructions from the other. You cannot lead a life controlled by your past and expect to move ahead. Once again, no man moves forward looking backward. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. This text is one of the most popular New Testament texts. We are quick to recite it and even confess it. But the question is, how many of us believe it? Do you love the Lord? Have you been saved by His grace? Are you a child of God? Then, dear believer, do you need to know something? Really know it? You need to be sure of something. You need to be confident in something. What is that? You need to know that right now, God is working everything out for your good. Yes, everything. Your job, your colleagues, your boss, your home, your neighborhood, that place, these circumstances, everything. He is working everything out for your good and for His glory. He is doing so right now, at this very moment. Yes, this is a promise you have heard a million times. Yes, this is something you even say to encourage others. You may even have that verse highlighted in your Bible. But for some reason, you don't believe the words for yourself. I have come to reassure you today. For this is the Word of God and His Bible does not return void. God is working everything out for your good today, right now, everything. The good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly. I tell you, everything, everything for your good. Romans 8.28 is not saying that everything that happens to us is from God. No, it is not. It is saying that for those who love God, he works all things out for them. He is telling us that everything that happens to us, good or bad, He knows about, He allows, and He uses for our good while we wait for the day of Jesus' return or our death, whichever comes first. We can and do experience some very bad things here, and we don't know why, but that's what faith is all about. Are you sure that God will do what He says He will do? Because He will. Or are you timidly crawling through your days, afraid you'll fall through at any moment? Now, remember that this promise is only for those who believe. We are those who love Him and have been called according to His purpose. Through His Son, Jesus Christ, He wants to have a personal, close, and eternal relationship with us. God made you, and one day He sent Jesus to invite you to have a personal relationship with Him. When you did, you became a believer. And ever since then, this promise has been coming true for you. 
Let me tell you a story. One day, two boys joined a Sunday school teacher's class. To sign them up, she had to find out how old they were and when they were born. The one who spoke up first said, We're both seven. My birthday is April 8, 1976, and my brother's is April 20th, 1976. She said, But that can't be right. No, it's not, said the brother who spoke less. One of us was adopted, the boy told the teacher. Which one, she asked. The boys looked at each other and smiled. The braver one went up to the teacher and said, We asked Dad a while ago, but he just said he loved us both and couldn't remember which one was adopted. By putting our faith in Jesus, we become his adopted brothers and sisters. We also become God's adopted sons and daughters. As children who have been fully adopted and accepted, we have the same blessings as his son, Jesus. Romans 8.28 is our reality because we have been adopted into God's family. His Spirit in us confirms His Word. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 14-16, says, The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments, for who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. After we become part of God's family, we understand and know that these things are true. For example, we know that everything works out for our good because God blesses us in every situation of our lives through His Holy Spirit. God lets everything happen in our lives and uses it for our good. Yes, sometimes we can't make sense of this idea. It's hard to understand that not only does God let everything happen, but that He uses everything for our good in some way. Parents do some kind of teachable moments with their kids. I am sure you know what I mean. You know, they use both good and bad things that happen to their kids to help them learn about life and grow even from bad and unfair things that happened. John MacArthur once said, No matter what our situation, our suffering, our persecution, our sinful behavior, our pain, our lack of faith, in those things as well as in all other things, our Heavenly Father will work to produce our ultimate victory and blessing. Any temporary harm we may suffer will be used by God for our benefit. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, Paul says, To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God uses everything for our good in some way. Yes, Christians do and will go through all kinds of hard things in life. It's hard to believe and accept that God lets these things happen, and can use them for our good. So he gives us his promises and his spirit to keep us going when things get hard. God isn't saying that bad things make good things happen on their own. Instead, he's saying that all of the events in our lives, even the terrible ones, work together for our good because of his will and power. God is not saying that every situation will have a happy ending. Often, the good that comes from a very painful situation, like getting fired from a job, isn't as good as the situation itself. God is also not saying that the end result of every situation will be materially better than the situation itself. If you get fired from one job, you might not find a better one. The good thing that may come out of this is being a better person. This is true because God cares much more about our everlasting lives than He does about our earthly successes. In Romans 8.28, God says that nothing will happen to us that He doesn't have control over. 
Some people will wonder, then why does he let this terrible thing happen to me? Even though this is a good question, we might never find a good answer in this life. Joseph is a great example of what it looks like to trust God even when life is hard. He went through a lot, like when his brothers unfairly threw him down a well and then sold him into slavery. Later, he was wrongly accused of seducing Potiphar's wife and put in jail. But it all led to him becoming second only to Pharaoh when the land was going through a terrible drought. God used him to keep Israel from dying of hunger. Joseph said it best in Genesis 50, 18 through 20, which reads, His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. If you love God, no matter what you are going through, he will use it for your good, very likely to save many lives from an eternal spiritual drought. Romans 8.28 also tells us that all this will be according to His purpose. His purpose is to make us like His Son. Romans 8.29 says, For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. First. God's plan is to save a world that has gone astray. He uses His people to reach out to people who don't know Him yet, which often means they have to give up a lot and go through a lot of pain. It did for Jesus for sure. Second, God's plan is to make us more like Jesus every day. All things are working towards these good things. It's not a brand new idea. God has been changing the lives of His people since the beginning of time because He loves and cares for them. Because of this, the Bible has a lot of verses that remind us that everything can be fixed. James 1, 2, and 3 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. We are a special people, a generation of royal priests, a holy nation, God's special children. We are called to praise the one who brought us out of darkness and into his wonderful light. We are witnesses of what God has done in our lives, and we should talk about it. When we are living up to our calling, God takes the bad things that have happened to us, which Satan wanted to use to destroy us, and turns them into something good. He chose us, and made sure that we would always be His. He saves us, makes beauty out of ashes, and is always working to make us more like Him, because He knows what is best for us much better than we could ever know for ourselves. Are you stuck in waiting for something good to happen? Listen, in the end, everything works out. If it hasn't worked out yet, that doesn't mean it's over. God is working on things, and he hasn't missed anything. His win is certain. His glory will shine through. When Christ comes back one day, we will be like him. Child of God, take comfort in the fact that on the earth and in heaven, God's purposes will be established. And for us believers, God is working everything out for our good in this life and eternally.